Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Friday, 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 April 28, 2023. We made it to the end of the week, guys. Congratulations to us. We did it. Uh, and you know what? Dare I say, and I feel like April 28th, it's pretty safe to say, but it's always risky here in the Midwest. But I'm going to go out and say it. It's starting to feel like spring. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the weather. It was a little bit chilly in the morning, but warm in the afternoon. And I mean, I'm in the basement, so it's chilly down here. So I still got a sweatshirt on, but it, I'm 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 in a good mood. I'm in a better mood. I feel like uh, you know, every time I go to a trip, I'm under a lot of water, trying to get ready for the trip. Then I'm at the trip. I'm super busy, and then I gotta like make all the content from the trip, and then catch up on things afterwards. So there's like a big kind of like heavy lift, so to speak, all around any big trip. And Boston Marathon is about as big as trips get. Um, but I feel like I'm coming out from underwater, so I'm feeling good. I'm in a better mood now, thankfully. And I also think that the warmer temps and the extra sunshine definitely help. So if you're listening to this on the audio-only version on the podcast, hopefully you're feeling good. Hopefully you feel like, you feel like you're reaching kind of like uh, the downhill part in a good way. I, you know, everyone else says it's all downhill from here, like it's a bad thing, but we're runners. So we like, I hope you're at the downhill part now because the downhill part's always the best part. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, but not live, welcome to you guys as well. You are listening to the number one running podcast to listen to while you're folding laundry. Even if you're doing that on a Friday night, hopefully you're not, maybe it's Saturday morning. Kids haven't woken up yet. Maybe and you're getting some laundry done before they start making a mess of all the other clothes, you know? So ho good luck to you guys. Hopefully you can get it done before everyone else uh gets up and moving all right let's see who we got in the uh in the chat today we got james he says yo what's going on hey go when talking about putting on the boss and kit flex yesterday i didn't mean at the gym <laughs> okay we mentioned that yesterday that i gotta put all the boss and stuff on he said i meant to for the oh for the track meet for my daughter hope she did well yeah you know what uh i wore uh, oh <laughs> funny story so yesterday she had what i think will probably be her last track meet of the season uh, there's an invitational meet on Monday, which I don't, I don't know. She has no idea. She's, she's clueless like me sometimes. Um, but like, uh, I don't know if she's going to be going to that meet, but she's a fifth grader and you know, it's for junior high. So like seventh and eighth graders are the ones that are pro predominantly going to be competing at that, but maybe, but we'll see. So yesterday was probably her last track meet. She did really well. Uh, you know, I was worried that it was going to get chilly in the evening. So I did wear, um, my green new york city marathon jacket um because her school colors are green um, among some of the other colors so i thought i would wear that um yeah so i didn't i didn't i guess i was flexing on people but i don't know i feel like wearing the boston marathon <laughs> is a little bit extra for a junior high school track meet but i did wear the new york city marathon stuff and uh you know it looks like a running jacket and i'm wearing all i ended up wearing green pants too they're a different shade of green but there, there's the pants i happen to be wearing and they ended up being greenish and, uh, you know, all this, all the parents are sitting up in the stands at this track meet. Uh, but when my daughter runs, I like to go to the 200 meter mark on the opposite end. So I could yell out some splits to her and let her know. Cause I feel like she's young, uh, and she doesn't quite understand the pacing yet. She's really nailing it yesterday. She nailed it, but like, she doesn't understand the pacing yet. So I'm out there like letting her know, like a little bit too fast, a little bit too slow. You got to catch up. You got to work together, that kind of thing. And uh, I get out there like the event before hers and the event before hers is a four by 100. Now four by 100 in junior high school is a bit of a disaster, a funny, lovely, wonderful, cute and exciting event, but also a little bit of a disaster. So I'm standing out there and there's one of the school coach It's a triple meet. So there's not that many coaches out there. One of the coaches standing with the flags, you know, to make sure that the exchanges are okay and let the timing people know that it's all going, everyone's ready. Um, but like, the gun goes off. First leg goes off without a hitch. Second leg is coming down, and they're coming down the back straight away. And I'm on ready, ready for leg three of this four by one. And all of a sudden, this one girl goes like to me, like looking right at me because I'm standing like on the outside of the track, and I'm the only like other adult there. She looks right at me, and she's like, "Is this where I stand?" And I'm like, "What did your coach say?" <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm not a coach. I'm just a grown up here. And I'm like, I know a little bit, but I don't know what her coach taught her. You know, I don't want to tell the wrong thing. She's like, which, which hand should I use to get to grab the baton? And I'm like, whichever one you feel comfortable with, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, four by one. It's not that important. I didn't want to say that, but I'm like, eh, just have fun. You'll be fine. Just start running. And so like uh, people thought, <laughs> people thought I was a coach because I was all in like green, but 
Um, I don't. I don't think I was flexing on anyone too hard yesterday to track me. All right. Um, we got uh, Martha's in here. She says a rabbit unboxing for today. That's what's in this box. Got some fresh gear from Rabbit. Uh, they're sending me two packages. I think I know what's in this one. I think I know what's in the second one. But I think well, I don't know which one is which. But I think I know what's in this one. So it should be good. Uh, Sean says I'm predicting some Cali vibe stuff in the box. You know, I'm I'm actually not sure about that. So we'll have to see. Um, yeah. Uh, James also says he know he enjoyed FOD uh, Andy on yesterday and the love for Canada. He uh, says he's being from mile zero of the Alaska Highway, which starts in Canada. He wanted to remind you all that the fastest North American man there is Levens, but no buzz. You know, uh, you know, can't I remember hearing about that? Cam Levens had a really great day. Um, the people, I mean, I heard a lot about it because you know I talked to a lot of people at ASICs, and they're all super excited because they had just picked him up. Like I feel like the week before that or something like that. Um, so they were super excited. He's, he has like a 205 and change, and that's the fastest North American marathon time. I think that's pretty cool. Um, he's pretty quiet though, you know? So it's like, um, I don't know if no, no one, like no one's interviewed him about it, which I find like typically means that like, he's not that interested in talking, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what his story is. So I don't know if he, James mentions Salazar, but I don't know if there's a Salazar connection there. I'm actually not that familiar with career. I know he was with Nike for a long time before ASICs, but I don't, I don't know what his kind of history is, but I think it's exciting. I think it's good for the sport. I think Canadian marathoning is having a moment too. Um, they've got a lot of good marathoners there. They got cam, they got Rory. Um, they've got quite a team. And so like, it's, uh, it's exciting for, for Canada, you guys up there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, I just think that like, uh, it's a moment for, I was on the um, Relay Book Club. You guys know I've been on that uh, Relay thing with a bunch of other people. And for Book Club this month, uh, we did Kara Goucher's book. Uh, and Kara is a Relay member as well. And so we had like the author talking about her book. Uh, and one of the questions from uh, people in the audience was, you know, what's up with Minnesota distance running? Why is it so good? Is it the hot dish? You know, um, but, you know, and Kara's answer was like, you know, I just think it's that when you have to deal with the weather, just makes you tough in a different kind of way and once you can deal with the weather then you can deal with anything and so you know maybe that's what's going on he's i mean his training is ridiculous like triple runs i'd like to see people start doing that you know everyone follows the ingerbertsons with their with their double threshold days let's see who starts doing the triple runs that'll be that who's gonna who do you think is gonna be the first person on youtube that does a triple run uh it's not gonna be me me i guarantee you that I don't think it'll be Andy because he's not a high volume guy. Um, I could see Ben Felton trying it out, but I feel like it'll be like Gorm Wimblad. He always tries all that crazy stuff. Maybe Ben, this is this uh um this messy happy. I always I always mess up the order of the words. Um uh, maybe he could do it because he always likes to tinker around with what some of the pros are doing. It's not it's not gonna be me, but that'll be interesting. Frank says, though, Ryan Hall's Boston time is still faster than Cam Levens, but they don't really make as big a deal out of it because of it as they should uh, after Tokyo. Yeah, I mean, is it? I didn't know that. I don't I don't remember all of Ryan Hall's times. But, um, yeah, I always feel like people are weird about times at Boston, which I feel like, yes, it's not record eligible, but people should be more excited about it because it's a really tough course. Um, on, on a somewhat related note is that um, – like uh, I think the, the Boston Marathon race recap video, I think is doing well and it's getting spread around to a lot more people um, because I'm starting to get like uh, not so nice comments <laughs> coming in. And that's how I always, always I know when, when YouTube deems a video doing well, it's, it sends it out to people who uh, normally don't kind of watch the channel. And that generally means uh, a certain percentage of people who uh, normally aren't interested in the kind of videos that I'm making. And so one of the questions people asked was, um, you know, like, isn't it illegal to run in a 50 millimeter shoe? And I was like, ah, that's kind of how I started out the video <laughs> saying that it's a 50 millimeter shoe. Uh, I'm not hiding the fact by any means. And I also explained that I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to win a standard, uh, get an age group podium or, or anything like that. So it's like, who cares? Um, but people wanted to make a big deal out of it. And I guess not that many. And I guess they weren't that making that big a deal out of it. But I was like, I don't know, man. 
people on let's run like to make big deals out of, out of little things that don't matter like that but um you know i'm not in, in i'm not interested in handing out asterisks on people's prs he's like what are they like what would you do if you had pr'd and then it wouldn't count i'm like ah, eh, who cares <laughs> who cares um and i was like you know after all i wanted to i just kept it pretty civil but i wanted to be like you know what I think that no one's, I wanted to be like, you know, if you think about it, no one's Boston PR should ever count because it's 1300 feet of downhill. It's too much of a downhill course. It's easy if you think about it. Cause that's the kind of thing that I think I would hear on, on let's run. But, um, but I do. Yeah. I mean, I think that people that PR in Boston are a different breed of human being and I just don't even understand it. Hmm. All right. Steve says, yo, what's going on? Happy Friday. Just dropped off my bike for service. I think I'll enjoy the run home. Uh, I wish I didn't have uh, his bag though. It's really warm. Six sunny and 60 degrees. Mm. You know, that reminds me, I got to send my, I got to send my bike in for service. I just, it, it's, it's way overdue for a tune up and like the gears aren't like switching. Right. Like it's uh, the gears will slip. Some of the gears. I just think that it needs to be just tuned up just a little bit. And, and you know what, my youngest daughter is starting to learn how to ride a bike with no training wheels, but the bike she's using is way too small for her now. So she needs a bigger bike too. So I'm going to see if like, I don't know if, I don't know what the whole bike inventory situation is now if we're, or if we're far enough removed, but we'll see. I got to go to the bike shop. That's a good reminder. But here's another thing that happened on the way home from the track meet. We got a flat tire. It wasn't so flat that we couldn't make it home. Like when we got into the car after the meet. I got a warning saying that the prior tire pressure was low on one of the tires. I stopped at a gas station, tried to fill it back up. It really wouldn't hold full amount of air pressure, but I was like, I don't know, maybe the sensor's just acting funny. Cause I kept putting air in it and I was like, it doesn't, I feel like I'm going to pop this tire. I don't want to do that. Um, but, uh, so we did that, but this morning the tire is like flat. It's not sitting on the rim flat, but it's flat. And so I got to take that in. And I don't, I don't even, I don't even know how to do that. We don't have a spare in it though, because it, it just has like a fix a flat, like a like an air compressor pump and some sort of weird chemical that you put in it. So I'll be able to drive it in, but I gotta get that taken care of too. So whew, yeah. Um, all right, let's get to the box. Because I always kind of forget the box when I've been doing these unboxings, and then you guys get antsy about it, and then you remind me. So I'm gonna try to do it a little bit earlier. I made it 13 minutes. I think that's like the fastest that I've gotten to the box. Um, so here we go from rabbit and, Oh, this is not what I was expecting. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember. Cause it, you know, when I, whenever they send me stuff, I get like a email saying like confirmation for the order. Um, but first thing that's in here is another rabbits. I have so many stickers. I don't know where to put all these stickers that I have. Where's the one I want to focus. It won't focus on the sticker. Anyway, you know what it's look like. Rabbit sticker. And then, uh, what is it? Boko gear hat. Like a bicycle hat style hat. It says rabbit on the front. Nice. Feels very like light and thin. It's made out of mo moisture wicking fabric. That's a, weird, that's a weird word to say. Another rabbit sticker. My kids do like these stickers. Um, and I got uh, a nice little... Letter. It says, wowza. It actually says wowza. First word, wowza. Boston was off the hook. The Kofuzi and Rabbit Shakeout run was epic. We thank you for all you did for Rabbit and hope you uh, can find some time to relax and chill with some new Cali Vibes gear. So who guessed that Cali Vibes gear? That's exactly what's in here. So check out this shirt. <laughs> you know what's funny is... Um, my daughter had like a, uh, I don't know what they called it. It wasn't a dance at school. It was like an after school hangout. And the theme was like a uh, Hawaiian vacation or something like that. So she wanted a Hawaiian shirt. And I was like, I, I have that yellow one from Rabbit the Cali Vibes last year. But I feel like this one would have worked for her. Look at that. Nice. I like it. Um, and it's got like the, the perforations in the back. So it makes it nice and ventilated. I don't know if it's not showing up. It's hard to see. Um, so it's nice and ventilated for the summertime. I feel like all of my collared shirts now are rab rabbit collared shirts. <laughs> um, that's all I have left. No, no other shirts. Um, and it's got the clasps, like not buttons, but like the, 
the easy open on, on and off buttons. So I'm a big fan of these. All right. Oh, I got lots of stuff in there. Then we got some shorts. These are uh, Beach Break 5 inches in forest green. Ah, uh, these are nice. I think I have these in like a navy blue. Um, I actually, um, they do have a, uh, they, it says they're low rise, semi relaxed. They do have a liner on the inside, like a runner's liner and a little key pocket inside the liner. But there's also regular side pockets. One has a zipper and then also a zipper pocket in the back. But I'll wear this to the pool. So last year I would wear that yellow, like Hawaiian ish type shirt um, and navy shorts. But I feel like, these green shorts and this shirt, this is going to be my new summer look right here. So you'll find me over at Three Oaks Reservoir this summer wearing that. There's another rabbit sticker in the box. Daniel Burton says, where is rabbit's headquarters? Uh, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, Santa Mont? No. Yes, I think San, San Luis Obispo. I think right around that area. It's right by... Um, very close to uh, running warehouse. Brian Lang says these are more collared shirt throwaways. <laughs> no, the last one was Uniqlo. So I've never thrown away any. I don't think I've thrown away any rabbit gear. It's nice. And Spencer Holmes says, "Do the rabbit products fit pretty true to size?" Yes, I do find that the Cali Vibes gear has is a much more relaxed fit, though. So depending on the kind of cut you're looking for, if you're in between sizes, it might not be right. But like, um, I'm you know the mediums all work well for me. Mm. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Martha says, "Rabbit is Santa Barbara, and Running World is, is St. Louis Obispo." There we go. There we go. Um, all right. Go to this next one. Ah, here we go. This is the one that I was really excited about. This is the uh, Speedster in uh, called Dress Blues, and it has a liner in it. So the normal Speedsters do not have a liner. So you still got to figure out underwear or you got to risk chafage. These um, are half tights with a liner, which I kind of think that's the best way to go um just because then you don't have to wear different underwear and these are a nine inch so they're a, i feel like they're a little i think the other ones the normal speedsters are seven inch so these don't look that much longer but i guess they are but they've got the great pocket one on each side enough to fit three gels or a phone really nicely and then a zipper pocket in the back um, I was trying to see if this liner has a key pocket, but it doesn't. But it doesn't need to because it has so many other pockets already. But yeah, I'm excited to test this one out because they've been telling me that they were going to make one with a liner. And I do really like this cut, like this navy color. I guess they call, they call it dress blue. But like this blue color, I like. I still feel like you might be paying a little bit of pee or sweat when you get real hot in this, but I feel like it's dark enough. I like that. Uh, Albert says, who needs liners? Live life on the edge and see what kind of chafing you get. Oh, I've seen what kind of chafing I get. That's why. I got to take a shower at some point, you know. It's going to be too uncomfortable. <laughs> Brian Lang says, I just learned yesterday you don't wear underwear under shorts with liners. Didn't know people went commando. You're not going commando. And this is a common thing. You don't go and commit. The liner is your underwear. That's why you have the liner. You know, so whether it's a two in one or whether it's a brief that's underneath there, that's what it is. We, uh, you know, what's funny is uh, like the first meet of every year, whether, whether from junior high all the way through high school, the first meet, there's always the one kid who normally wears like boxers, not boxer briefs, but boxers, but then puts on the uh, two inch split shorts for the first time. And so you could see the boxers underneath at the track meet. So there's always that. So like, think of it that way. Like you, you can't wear boxers underneath them. So like you shouldn't be wearing any underwear. That's how you know. Yeah. You know what though? Uh, I had a conversation with Matt Choi about this over the weekend in Boston. And I was like, Matt, do you still cut the liners out of your shorts? Cause a long time ago, 
I think it was maybe like three years ago, he made a, a reel or a TikTok about how he takes all his running shorts and just instantly, as soon as he gets them, he cuts the liner out. And I'm like, dude, why? And he's like, it's just not comfortable. I like my underwear. I don't like these liners. They're not comfortable. For me. I'm like, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm like, are you still? And I was like, maybe it's because he's newer to running. He's not used to how they fit a little bit different. Um, not that he hadn't run before. I mean, he was a phys personal trainer uh, years years ago, so it's not like he had never run. But he just wasn't like I don't think he was running marathons back then all that much. Like not like he is now. So I was like, well, maybe now he's he he sees it the difference, and he's like, nope, I still cut him out. I'm like, okay, all right. Steve Zavar Steve Zervo says, Co, I wore the Rabbit Speedsters with the liner for Boston. They handled great, but they did absorb a lot of water from the rain. Ooh. That'd be interesting. Do you think that's because they, they were the liner or because they were nine inch versus a seven inch, which is a normal normal. Mm. Mm. Andrew Scott says liners, this is the way. <laughs> uh. Obi Run says, I always cut them out and wear compression underwear because I have thick thighs. See, that's what I think is going on with Matt Choi, because he's a bigger guy than I am. You know, and so I'm thinking like, you know, that brief might be designed for someone that's shaped more like me than it is for someone that's shaped more like Matt Choi. I mean, I feel like we could do like a uh, Asian version of the movie Twins where he's Arnold Schwarzenegger and I'm Danny DeVito. You know what I mean? <laughs> My favorite part of that movie is when he's like singing that he's just, just come Arnold Schwarzenegger comes out of the shower and he's like, don't come back. You know, like what do you say? He was that. What's that song? Take out the papers and the trash. That part, that's just such a, such a great scene. I don't know. Do you, have you guys watched that? I feel like this audience is the right age to remember the movie Twins. Like if I was talking to anyone even like a little bit younger, they wouldn't get it. But you guys are like my age, most of you guys. Mm -hmm. CV76 wants to know, do kill tab liners? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Eric Trapp says, "Hey, Kofam, glad to catch the live stream. Did I miss the Janji gear unboxing? We're still do it's to this. This unboxing is for a rabbit, uh, and we got we got one more thing in here. Mm -hmm. Steve Zervo said that." When when he ran with the liner, it felt like thicker fabric than the regular. So maybe that's why it could be, it could be. Um. Yeah. So this one, it feels like the same. Maybe it is thicker. I don't know. It is a nine inch shoe, so there's like a lot of material there. But they did tell me that they are making a thinner version too, because I did mention to them at TRE, and I'm sure this was already in the works. It's not like they could have been like taking my feedback in December and all of a sudden making something new. But like. Um, I had said that like sometimes this, the speedster half tights are a little bit warm and so they made a thinner version so we'll see uh, I think I thought that that might, might be in here but it's not hopefully that's coming soon Michael Costa says I hate when companies don't put pockets for fuel or phones yeah I don't know I've been, I've been mentioning that about a lot, like a lot of brands. I'm just like, they'll send me stuff. And I'm like, dude, guys, like, how am I supposed to leave my house like this? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not changing in a locker room and then walking down to the track. You know, like I need, I need a place to hold stuff. I'm not in college. I'm not in high school. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hong says, we need to do an academic of the Asian running content creators, Ko, Ko Choi, Dez, and Chungi. I think, I mean, we, I think we could do that. Can we get Dez in there? Dez would run it. Dez does a lot of running, I think. I think he says that he doesn't do that much running, but I think he does. Um, I think we need a couple more legs for an Ekadin, though. Um, I think it's six people for an Ekadin. I guess you could do it for, somebody, some people might have to run twice, that's all. We, I think we can find a couple more people. We can get Jay President in here, you know, some of the Spark Squad. We could fill out a team. 
<laughs> Shannon says, hey, Co hey, Co family. I must have joined at a weird time. Co mentions Matt Choi cuts out his shorts linings, and now Co is Danny DeVito to Choi's Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Serini Vaya Puri says Is Janji 8 inch half tights a good choice for racing? I think you raced with them before Yeah I uh, I don't think I've ever raced in the 8 inchers So I have the first generation That they came out with is the 9 inch And I've raced in those I do have the 8 inch ones That I've done a lot of workouts in Definitely good for workouts And I think that it would be good for racing too the, I raced in the nine inch ones i think a couple times now uh mainly because i like the color black and it goes with singlets and and shoes and stuff uh, and for racing you know i like to get a little bit dressed up but for the workouts like the colors they've been sending me are a little bit kind of outside i mean speaking of outside my comfort zone i'm wearing a big pink sweatshirt today but you know they're a little bit outside my comfort zone for colors so like i don't usually race in them uh, but yeah they're that's a good one lots of pockets And Nicholas Greenfield goes, how'd the trail run go the other day? Uh, it was really nice. I went out for a first run in the Solomon Max Glide Trail. And uh, it was a dry day, but all the, the surfaces were pretty soft because it had been raining. Um, so, like, it just made for a really pleasant day. And I had a very good experience with the Solomon. Um, that might be my favorite Solomon shoe the max glide trail i have to do some more runs in it you know but like it's also kind of like the least solomony of the solomon shoes that i've tried so that might be it but like it was comfy i felt like i could pick up the pace i felt like i had plenty of traction i didn't get them too muddy or anything so like I, i'll need to figure out a time to do that but um so far i really enjoyed i did I, I did a short run it was like five miles so it wasn't that much um but yeah it was really nice Great day, great weather, just feeling good. It was after a lift though. So I was like, Oof, I don't know how this is going to go. And it wasn't miserable. So I feel like, oh, there's a lot of things were good. So it just felt, felt good. So, um, yeah. Oh, I need to get out to some more trails though. So, you know. <laughs> JN Park says, you should have Danny DeVito as a guest. You know, my sister's met Danny DeVito before. He rubbed her pregnant belly in London. It's a long story. <laughs> um, not in a weird way, but, you know, I guess any, like, man rubbing a woman's belly, pregnant belly, um, is kind of a weird story. But it was Danny DeVito. So I guess you kind of roll with it, I guess. <laughs> you know? Uh, but I've never met him in person. I'd love to. I think he's great. Mm, all right. Oh, yeah, Alan Lucy, we got to get Billy Yang in there. Yeah, we can get Billy Yang in there, too, for sure. And then it might have to be a trail I could in, and then it just changes everything. But then I think maybe it'd be easier to get Dez involved if it's a trail, because I think he likes being on the trails more. All right, here's the last one for the box for today. Boom. It kind of looks like a old school. So it's kind of like a retro design, you know, like a baseball shirt. But uh, it's super perforated. So this will be nice for summertime, too. I feel like, is this the Cali Vibes? I don't know if it's Cali Vibes. This is S Cafe, Ice Cafe fabric. What does it mean? It's made out of like coffee grinds or something like that? It doesn't say. I'm going to have to research that a little bit more. I don't understand. But it's the Easy T perforated ice at short sleeve in canal blue. I'm mean, not a huge fan of blue stuff, but I think I could rock this. I, I think I'm definitely going to wear this to the pool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so looking forward to summer, guys. I really I really can't can't wait for summer. Um, yeah, Dark Cake says it's made from coffee grinds. That's what I thought, but it didn't say that on this thing. On the back, it says, drink it, wear it. Moisture retaining material with SCAFE patented technology that lets your skin feels cool and comfortable. I don't know how moisture retaining material would work, but I'll I'll look it up and I'll get you guys an answer. But I thought I remember seeing that like because coffee grounds don't you can't put them in compost, right? So it's like it can be tough uh, from a waste perspective. So if you can find a way to do something different with them, I think that's good. I'm not sure. I'm not positive on that one. 
I need to do a little bit more research. TV76, these are Iowa vibes. You know, maybe I'll fit in a little bit better if, I've, if it looks like I'm wearing baseball clothes. I'd be like, how was the sports ball game, gentlemen? You know, I could strike up a conversation with people that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, Robbie said, CV said, Robbie said he drank his sweat. I don't think that's exactly what this is for, but maybe Robbie saw like a label like that and he thought that's what you could do with it. And I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, Robbie must have been really dehydrated and delirious if he thought that was going to be a good idea. I don't know if you guys heard that story, but Robbie went out for a run. And he didn't bring enough water and it was hot and it got super sweaty. And so he decided to like drink the moisture out of his shirt that was soaked wet and uh, it didn't turn out well. As any normal rational person would expect, but I guess Robbie was surprised by that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got here. And you guys got a lot of stuff in the chat today. That's awesome. Um Affluent Journey says he's packing for Flagstaff with two pair of Ultra Glide ones for 38 miler at Cocodona 250. Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. I, you know what? I've never been in an, an idea that I've been trying to pitch to some brands is for like me to go out there for a weekend. I've been trying to pitch the idea with Tommy Rums too, where both of us would go out. He would do, he does a lot of stuff with his phone and Instagram real content, and I would do stuff with like a runner's weekend. Um, um, the idea would be to like go with brands and like interview whichever of their athletes that live out there, you know, and also do kind of like we go out there, we do some of our own running, we do some of our own exploring, maybe try to get in a group run if anyone wants to. But I'm like, who's going to want to go to our group run? It's like all professional athletes out there. They're not going to go want to come run with Tommy and me. But like um, maybe we do that. I feel like the vegan food scene is pretty decent in Flagstaff from what I hear. And then, uh, you know, like make some content and have it sponsored in a way. We haven't had any takers. I think people were interested in the idea, but we got to get better at like understanding when to pitch ideas because people are budgeting things like a year out. So we got to start pitching ideas now. But I'd like to go out to Flagstaff and run for a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. There was always the joke about like the non-elite training camp. But I'm like, should we do a non-elite training camp? Can we do that? Every time I hear about people that have like camps, I'm like, oh, how did you pull that off? How are you doing that? When I feel like, what is it like in, endurance something? Enduro? There's like a retreat that you could do. There's things like that. Uh, Matt Fitzgerald's been advertising some. He's doing something out in Flagstaff, you know? I'm like, how are these guys people pulling this off? I really just want to do city slickers, but with running instead of cattle rustling, you know? That's really all I want to do. But sorry, that was a real, that was a real sidetrack. But AJ, good, good luck for the 38 miler. Isn't that weird that the 38 miler is like the short event? That's bizarre. That's farther than I've ever run. Stevie 76 would be like band camp. I mean, it would be because remember, distance runners are weird people. So you get a bunch of weird people. It's going to give, it's going to have a band camp vibe, you know? <laughs> Daniel Burton says Kavuzi camp in Flagstaff. I would love it, but like I don't know how to figure that out. I've I've been in contact with a couple of like tour organizations before, and they were like, "We think that you have an, a dedicated audience that would love a trip like this, and like here's how the math would work, and like you know the, here's what it would cost for them, and then like what it costs for you, and all this stuff." And I'm like, "Okay," but I'm like, all these trips were like, like walking around touristy trips. So I know there's companies that do like running ones and maybe I need to just start sampling some of those and see if I could do something like that. But I don't know. Eric says he just did a boundless endurance camp in early March in Scottsdale. It's great fun. I do it for Chicago too. Cough, cough. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I want to see. You'll have to tell me more about that, Eric. Maybe I'll well, maybe I can message you about it or something. Oh, Frank says cattle driving. Cattle rustling is stealing cow. See there, that's why I don't know. 
or cattle driving. It's not city slickers was about caddy. See, you can't correct me, Frank, when I'm when I'm referencing city slickers as my point of reference in this. You know what I mean? I clearly don't know, but um, I appreciate the correction though. Yeah, Martha says, Co, if you create a camp, we can do all those weird miles at the end of the week or or two, it la however much it lasts. That would be fun. We could just have we could just have a weird mile at the end of every day, like right before dinner or something. <laughs> Eric says, you have Scully and host it. Just want to listen to him riff about suffering and work in that accent. You know, you know, you he made one this week that I thought was really good. Um I was like, oh, because more usually they're like they're 14 minutes, and I'm like, these should all be eight. Um, not that they're bad, but I'm just like, he'll, 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 I'm like, he's going to figure out how to like really distill it and make a much higher view duration retention kind of thing product. But like this week's video was really good. Or I think it was this, I watched it this week. I don't know if it was this week's video, but it was really good. He's getting, you could tell like they're doing all the reps is paying off for him. It's getting much, I mean, I have always enjoyed it, but it's getting much better. Michael Haney says, in college, we did a running camp every year at some Catskills resort. Um, ah, the Catskills are nice. I feel like they're so underrated, too. Maybe we should just, should we just run up into Poconos? <laughs> we, can, we can get one of those resorts that has all the rooms that have a hot tub in the shape of a heart. <laughs> That's a little far away from the Catskills, but I don't know. I, I'm more familiar with the Poconos than I am with the Catskills. Dan Jones says weird how about distance runners are exceptional people I mean we could call it that too but like I've I've been a little bit I used to say uh I was a very idiosyncratic person and I feel I, th I think I still am um but yeah I mean however you want to phrase it I want you to just whatever the term is I want you to own it and we're just not like we're not like everybody else you know and I want to be I want us all to be proud of that Kyle says, I'm officially registered for the Indy New York City double. Thanks to the advice from y'all. Let's see how this goes. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. There is a non-elite lakeshore camp. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if that would be. I think that could be doable. It would depend on where we stay, you know. Mm, that's so much planning, though. I don't, I don't even hardly like to plan my own weekends, but like. I would have so much pressure if I was planning everyone else's week. That's why I need like help of like a company that does this, you know? So I'm going to have to look up this boundless endurance thing. Mika says I'm doing a 56 K ultra in four weeks and that's close to 38 miles, right? Trying to figure out whether to go with speedier trail shoes or normal chunky ultra shoes. Probably ending up with the S lab ultra three though. See, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that one. I feel like all the S Lab stuff, as soon as I hear the words like from Solomon, if I hear S Lab, I'm like, okay, I don't have to keep listening anymore because that's not a product intended for me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I'm thinking about doing, I, I keep forgetting the name of it. I keep forgetting to sign up. And Tommy Runs was like, I'll run it with you. I haven't sent him the link either. So we got, I got to get on that though. But there's a there's a 50K out in the middle of nowhere. And I it's not in the middle of nowhere. It's in Solon, which is not the middle of Iowa, uh, nowhere. I think it's in Solon, uh, in Iowa. I think I'm thinking about doing that one. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just going to go out at it like six or six and a half hour pace. I'm not sure what the terrain's like on that one, but I'm just going to chill. And so for me, I'm like, I don't know. I felt like I ran in the, the Max Glide trail that I ran in. I feel like it's a very much an American trail style running shoot, like a very Hoka ish. But I also felt like, you know, when I was coming downhill and I had to do some quicker fit footwork. Felt like it, it was felt really lightweight and nimble, so I'm like, I feel like that could work. That's probably what I would run, race that race in. Um, I'm trying to think what else I might. I don't know. I still got the Tri Tri Tribuco Max Two in here, which I'm excited about. A bunch of FF Blast Plus in a trail shoe, and then I also have the Fresh Fill More Version Four, which, depending on what that trail is like, I mean, I'm guessing Mika that yours is probably not going to be like an Iowa trail. So it might be a little bit more rigorous where the fresh foam more trail is probably not going to be a great choice for you. But yeah, I just think that like, it's so specific. 
Like you got to know the terrain to pick the shoes. I think a lot of times for trail shoes. Mm. All right. Uh, Auto VV says a, pan, a camp where you can pick up the brain of an elite runner would be cool. Doesn't I mean Steph Bruce still does a camp? Or do the the Bruces they do? Is it is it the Bruces or is it just Steph Bruce that does a camp? They do. A, I think it's out in Flagstaff too, isn't it? They've been doing that for a long time, or at least Steph Bruce has been doing it for a long time. I don't know if that's a women's camp though. I don't. I mean, all the pictures that I see, I'm not sure if I've seen any men besides Ben Bruce in any of the pictures. So I don't know. I just feel like you know, fantasy camp. I got such a weird rap in like the late '90s and early 2000s. You know, like grown men wearing putting on baseball uniforms and like, you know, playing baseball for a couple of weeks. I, that guy just got really intense. I feel like, and I think I kind of lost steam. It played itself out. But like, I don't know. This isn't a fantasy camp. It'd just be a time to just run a whole bunch. I don't know. That seems like fun to me. Heather Briggs says, I tried to convince my sister to buy a B&B &B in Southwest Colorado because I wanted to open a runner's retreat. See, I feel like that sounds nice. Is there, would there be demand for something like that? You know, I mean, it, there's gotta, that's gotta be exist, right? It's not like, I, I can't imagine that I just invent, I didn't, I know I didn't invent it because I know that there's some that exist. But like, I don't know. I maybe, I, maybe that's something I should try to do this summer. Just experience a couple of different ones of them, make some videos about it, get some people excited about it. Yeah, I feel like that could be fun. Nadia says, hey, Nadia, what's going on? She says, uh, Timothy Olsen does a running retreat partnering with Adidas outside of Boulder. It was fun. Ooh. See, I got, I, I just, I just got to, I got to, I got to dig in. I got to figure it out because I feel like this would be fun. I'm not saying I got to like headline one, but maybe I, we could like pick one and we'll all go sometime, you know. And Eric says, uh, Cat Bradley, winner of Western States 100. I, 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 you know, I knew the name, Eric, but I appreciate a little, little bit of extra context there for this trail race, this trail athlete. So Cat, Cat Bradley, winner of Western States 100, was at the Boundless thing in Phoenix. Fun to hear her perspective. In any case, probably better in the mountains, I guess. I don't know, but it depends on, you know, time of year. I mean, Phoenix is kind of, depending on where you are in Phoenix, that's mountainous to me. It's hilly enough for, for me. I know for you, you're out in in Denver, it's not, but it is for me. Andrew Scott says, like, a run camp sounds something in Tracksmith's wheelhouse. Yeah, and you know what? Um, there was, uh, you know, and, and I talked to Dave Spandorfer about it when I met with him in Boston, uh, co-founder of Jonji, because Jonji used to do that. They had like these, I think it was twice yearly trips that they would do with some of like the John G, you know, he could do like a lifetime membership or something like that. Kind of like what Bandit does with their subscription model, like John G was doing that already. And then um, uh, I was supposed to go on one and then like, you know, travel got difficult for a while there for a minute. Um, but that was something that they were going to do. And I was really looking forward to it. And I, like that to me makes a lot more sense for Johnji because I feel like Johnji is like the intersection of running and travel. So I feel like for them that like a running retreat sounds perfect, but, um, I don't remember what he said about, I was like, are you guys still going to be doing that? And I can't remember what, I can't remember what his answer is. You can see my journalist journalism skills are not so strong. <laughs> Martin Pesci says, you know, I was just at the Tracksmith Clubhouse and they had an amateur sweatshirt and I really wish it said non-elite. That'd be something else, wouldn't it? A tracksmith shirt that says non-elite. I just feel like uh, it's not the vibe. It doesn't really go well. You know, amateur goes well with Tracksmith, but I don't, I'm not sure like the whole non-elite thing. It's, it might be slight brand misalignment, but maybe I'm splitting hairs a little bit too fine. Albert says, is the Bandit subscription worth it? Real talk. I think that if you're traveling to a lot of races, then it is. Or if you're in Brooklyn, it is. Because, like, there you do a lot of, like, in-person events that you get access to um, if you're in the subscription. But I, I, I feel like if you were just, like, using it to get discounts on merch, you know, and, like, 
running gear i'm not i don't know that it would be worth it i know that i probably i mean i'm not really a big subscription guy um so i mean not, i'm not the target audience i think but like um a lot of like those events that i'm going to when i go to visit different cities and stuff and there's bandit stuff there a lot some some of it's open to the public but some of it is like um so it's like it's released to the subscription members first so that's so like if you're like traveling a lot to races and wanting to have that social experience too i think that's a pretty cool way to do it dan johnson says could you do a run across iowa kind of like the bikers do maybe north to south along the mississippi you know i i just remembered about rag bride because my friend ryan doozer has a new shirt that just came out I think it's a, it's like a bicycle and it says like powered by frijoles on it because he loves beans. Um, and it's a it's a fundraiser for it's like an eco friendly shirt, which translates to mean it's also a little bit more expensive. But it's an eco friendly shirt, and um, all the proceeds go to an Iowa bike charity. Um, and he's they're selling it now because people are thinking about Ragbri, which I think I'd rather just do Ragbri first, you know. Um, only problem is like you know i understand why it's in the summer but it's like ah, it's always a hard time for me to like take a week out and, and ride a bike but i guess like right now i'm not training for anything this summer so hmm, maybe maybe i'll i don't know i gotta figure out i gotta figure out i got a lot of, i gotta figure out on the calendar i gotta figure out what i'm doing for, for memorial day if i'm going to boulder boulder or not fourth of july is figured out or at least tentatively or yeah you know, it's 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 in pen i don't have my flights booked yet or not but it, you know we we've agreed to that so hmm yeah i feel i feel like we i don't know about running across iowa that would be i mean that's just so far it's so far rag by the rag by route is usually about 500 miles you know that would take me a long time to run 500 miles isn't it i thought that's what producer said i don't know Martha says say yes to Boulder Boulder yeah I just I, I just don't know if it's uh, there might be a different Boulder trip coming up that's the thing and it's really close to it so I gotta just I gotta send up a follow up email to see if that's happening or not um, or maybe I just need to say no to that I don't know but we'll see um, Calvin says Cody Coe is about to do his first Ironman who's gonna run CIM before he got hurt He's he's pretty quick, isn't he? I mean, I know he's young, so it's like, um, so that always helps uh, in, in the speed department. But um, he's run so, several marathons now, hasn't he? I don't really watch Cody Co, but I'm aware of his running a little bit. Dario says, "You will mathematically break even using the bandit subscription if you spend three hundred ninety dollars per subscription period." A bandit, that's not that hard to do. So yeah, it could be, it could be, but yeah. Um, Go running with Oliver uh, says since no summer marathons, what's Kofuzi weekly mileage? I don't know. I think it's going to be uh, probably in the fifties. I think I'm going to try to make sure I'm hitting the gym. I feel like I need to be like extra, like uh, not intense about it, but like, you know, I want it to become a habit. So I just feel like I got to like, make sure i'm hitting every third day is my goal um to get in the gym and then uh yeah maybe like 50 to 60 miles a week you know like eight to ten miles a day of running something like that um that's kind of what i'm looking at so that's what i'm thinking dave says are the short shorts coming back for fourth of july uh i mean maybe so it's an Adidas race now. So those uh, Mizuno sp split shorts that I had uh, won't work. I suppose I could wear some of the chicken legs ones that I have. I got chicken leg camo ones. I feel like that's always appropriate for the 4th of July, right? Um, I don't know if Adidas will be giving me any kit to race in. I don't even know. We talked about maybe having them give me. I would, I would love to be able to race in the Audios Pro 4 if that comes out. But probably be racing in the Takumi Sen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's 4th of July in Atlanta. So I feel like we got to go short shorts. 
you know. I was trying to think if there's a way they can get me like a, a hip sticker so I could just go no shirt, short shorts. <laughs> but then I was like, well, where would you put the bib? You know, split shorts aren't big enough to put a bib on, but I'm like, a uh, hip sticker, like on a track meet. But I'm like, ah, oh, then, then how you get the timing chip? So we have to, so I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I have to wear a shirt, but I'll, I'll go short shorts. I'll probably go short shorts, you know. Let's see uh, Steve Zervo says I'm going to start gymming soon as well Co it is horrifying <laughs> yeah I'd say more terrifying than anything else but um, shooing with Cody says how's the gym treating you why not pick days like every Tuesday Thursday leg day and Wednesday upper um, I do every third, every third day works for me because that's, I'm used to like, I've now gotten used to a nine day training cycle. And I feel like my body responds well to that, at least from uh, a running perspective, I suppose it doesn't necessarily hold that like lifting. Cause I'm using very different, I guess, muscle sets um, or muscle fiber types um, would respond well to it either. But I'm going to just start out from there and see how it goes and uh, do that. So um I still want to do running, you know, so like that way I could still do running. If I do it every third day, that kind of like in my mind, I can understand how to like break that up a little bit better. So that's why I'm going with that. Um, the dream of treating me. Okay. Here's what I think I've realized. And maybe um, I just have a bad back, but my back's been bothering me since going to the gym. And uh, I was like, well, maybe my form's bad. Maybe this, maybe that. But I think what's going on is I think my form's not terrible. Um, but I think my legs are capable of moving more weight than my back is ready to move. And so, uh, I think for now, I'm just going to kind of stay at this relatively lighter weight until kind of like, I don't experience back pain after lifting. And then yesterday, um, my back was kind of bothering me all day. And then after the track meet, I came down here and I rearranged the studio a little bit. Um, and that made me, I have to move all these bookshelves and I had to move furniture and stuff. It looks all the same to you guys because I kind of reset it all up the same, but I kind of spread things out a little bit more because I kept having to like move. I still had three different sets. I have the green or grayish set for when I'm doing shoe videos. I have the white backdrop for filming shoes. And then I have this backdrop for live streams and stuff. So I still had all those three spaces, but they were so on top of each other that I always had to like still move a lot of stuff as I move from set to set. Now I can kind of just leave stuff and every once in a while I just have to turn a light around to point one direction or another. So I was, at, I was moving a lot of stuff around and lifting kind of weird, heavy shaped things. And I don't know what it was about that, but my back felt good after that, which is not usually how things go when I move furniture around by myself. Um, so I feel great today. So... You know, hopefully it's just kind of like my my maybe my back just needed a week to catch up. But so far, I think it's okay. Adam thinks I should go with some flag shorts. Yeah, I don't know about that for me. I think camo camo might work. No, maybe maybe it's Fourth of July. I, I maybe I should get some. I think I mean <laughs> for Fourth of July uh in the south i think i'm either going to find some american flag split shorts or the ones that look like uh daisy dukes those are the kind that i'm going to get i think i think i have to figure out one of those uh brian says petrie was 80 degrees fahrenheit at 8 a.m with 90 percent humidity last year fyi yeah i guess i'm not gonna have to do a lot of warming up that day <laughs> uh All right, let's do one more and then we'll call it a day. Danny Burton says, Co, maybe get a trainer. You know, I thought about that, but I don't know. It just seems much more structured than I want to do. Uh, and, and Shannon wants to know, Co, did you pull the bar without weight first as part of a warm up? You don't start a tempo by running tempo pace. Uh, no, I didn't do that. But what I do do, and maybe I do need to do that, but like I do my mobility routine first. So I do like body weight squats and then lunges and then side lunges and then single leg deadlifts. I do all like a set of those of each of those before I put anything on with weight. 
but maybe for the maybe for the squat since the squat i don't know if it's the squat that does it or the deadlift that does it but i think maybe i'll just do one of super lightweight and then i'll put not that i'm putting heavy weights on there i'm doing i did the bar and you know 60, 70 pounds yesterday so not not a lot so what's that 115 and my body weight's 145 so you know i'm not doing a lot um but yeah, I think you're right, Shannon. I, I thought kind of what I was doing was enough, but I think maybe I need to do more just to get kind of like the back ready, you know? CV76 says, the gym is scary when people are yelling and throwing weights on the ground. You know, I'm at the YMCA. It's pretty chill. Um, there's a lot of equipment there. I'm surprised how much equipment is there, and it's pretty chill. Except every time I've gone, there's one guy that's doing like weird stuff, right? And so last time there was a guy that was like, I don't know. It was like uh, the best way I could describe it is if like someone had taken drugs and then decided to come to the gym and was like, I'm going to do all the workout in 12 minutes, you know? And so like he was using a squat rack and had like a, uh, a bench in it and had like resistance bands and some free weights and was hopping around. And I'm not sure. I was like, what, what's happening here? I don't know. I'm like, I know it's been a long time I've been at the gym, but this new trend where like you do like 17 things at the same time. I'm like, I don't understand. My understanding of the gym is you lift something for about 40 seconds, you know, like low, low reps, high weight, and then you rest for a minute and then you do another one. So it's a lot of just resting, you know, this new way, it's, it's a lot of jumping around. It's a lot of make, it is a lot of making noise, but that was just the one guy and everyone's kind of just like, there's a halo around him because no one wanted to get too close. And then yesterday, it, was, it wasn't he wasn't doing too weird of stuff. He was doing jumping jacks, not jump, jumping jacks, jump rope in between every set. So like you had to give him a lot of space. But other than that, it's just pretty normal. Everyone's kind of like eyes down, doing their thing. It's been nice. I kind of like it. And Calvin says, what runners think of gym people is what gym people think of CrossFit people. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he was doing CrossFit stuff. I don't know what that is. I don't know. That's just, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Eric says, warming up for a run in Florida was just me yawning on the front porch. It's so hot all the time. There you go. Um, and everyone's saying, like, do what Shannon said. Uh, Andrew says wide words from Shannon. Okay. Okay. I'll just do one with no weight and then, and then I'll do it. Yeah. And the shooting with Cody says, if you're deadlifting, it just could be you're using muscles you haven't used before. That's also very true. You know what? The day after the first day I did some deadlifting, like I've done like single leg deadlifts and I do have the kettlebell, the one over here in the house. Uh, and I, sometimes I use that to, as the weight for my single leg deadlifts, but like, the next day, my glutes hurt where I was like, oh, these are parts of a glute that I've never felt before. And it's sore. I'm like, I don't even know the glute goes back that far. It was weird. So I'm learning all sorts of new things, guys. I've been sore in places I've never been sore before. And it's as if I've never worked out a glute. Because I guess I really haven't. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. All right, guys. That's going to be it for today. Uh, Monday's video. I don't know what Monday's video is going to be to be honest with you. But we'll do something for Monday. Um, and that'll be the next time I see you guys. Well, yeah, I think there'll be a video for Monday and then we'll do a live stream. I think I got packages coming in. So we'll do some more unboxings and we'll hang out same time as today, 1 p.m. Central time. Hopefully I see you then. In the meantime, have some fun on your long runs this weekend or if you're recovering from a marathon, have fun recovering this weekend. Enjoy the weather. Be safe out there. Thanks. <laughs>